Hey, how's it going everyone? So, as some of you may know, I'm studying mechanical engineering. Um, and I realized recently, I was like, I can do a lot of 3D modeling. I've been doing that for years now and I'm getting better and more experienced and all, but I don't have a way of building things very well. Um, <laughs> this is my only toolbox. It has like a hammer and like a set of screwdrivers, maybe some scissors, uh, box cutter, you know, like nothing, nothing that can allow me to make some complex geometries. So as a first tool, I decided what can I make that would open up more doors for things that I can make in the future. So I could either, you know, buy a, buy a saw, I could get some sort of laser cutter, CNC thing, but you know, I'm in an apartment, so I can't drag a CNC mill four flights up. Um, so I decided that I'm gonna build my own 3D printer. Um, there were some options to buy online, there's many options, but I decided against that and I wanted to build it myself. This is going to be the journey of me building a 3D printer for myself um, from scratch and we'll see how it goes. All right, so as I said, I only have my toolbox. That's about it. There's nothing really else. I maybe have like some, you know, small electronics and stuff from my freshman year where they made us get an uh, electronics kit, has like an Arduino in it and so on. So I started off with trying to decide what kind of frame I want for the 3D printer. So I wanted to get a pre-made frame in a sense um, that wasn't, you know, too expensive or, or too much of a cop-out, I guess is a good way of putting it. So I found the Garber i3, which is a laser cut variation of the Prusa i3. So Prusa is this big company that does a lot of 3D printers and they, they're like super famous. They kind of distribute all over the world. They've done a lot of great stuff with COVID recently with the face masks or the face shield making. So this is a variation on that that was made a few years ago and I found it on GitHub. So I ordered one on Amazon from the Ukraine and the guy who made it cuts all the parts out on his laser cutter. And today we're gonna assemble this. I wasn't able to record the whole thing because I had to go to class. I'm gonna pan the camera down here a little bit. So we got the frame itself here. Um, frame's got, let's see. So these are the two spots for the Z-axis motors. So the Z-axis is this way. Um, as they spin, the uh, carriage goes up and down. The spots for the Y-axis are on the bottom of the base. So there's one there. This is where the pulley will sit. And the motor sits on this side. So we have a belt going that way. And then the x-axis will be suspended on the z-axis going back and forth here. And now those, that's what these two pieces are for. So we have the, this one's on the right side, and this one's over here. So what'll happen is we have our motor right here in this hole on my uh, left hand. The motor will, will stick out and it'll have a belt on it. And then the belt will sit in between these two and it'll move a carriage in between with another motor on it back and forth in the x-axis. All right, we're back. Um, so I got a bunch of the things that I need, um, those things being the mechanical structures. We got the linear rods, the screws, uh, belts, pulleys, stuff like that. So today we're gonna finish up the mechanical structure of the 3D printer before I go home for winter break. So I'm gonna go this way. I have a little camera set up, a little funky thing I have here. So let's see. What I can do. So, here's my hand cam. So, in here, we have some M5 threaded rods, two of them. Um, those will be for the Z axis. We have these uh, M3 screws. This is what's used for the stepper motors. And then we have some M5 nuts, which are the captive nuts that'll sit in the frame in those little spots that have been called out. So, we have the LMU 8s, which are the, the linear bearings, um, some normal bearings. Um, we also have a timing belt, and then we have these um, couplers, and these couplers will be used with the motors, the stepper motors, and combine the uh, screw shaft to them. So that's that for this little bag. In here as well, we have a bunch of linear rods. They sell them in a little kit that comes with wrap printers. So some of these I may have to cut down to size. We're gonna have to see how I'm gonna get a hold of a way to do that. But um, this is the first step, is getting my hands on them. 
Alright, so there are two of each length and each has a respective um, uh, axis to go on. So I think there's like the Z is probably the tallest ones and then the X and Y are these respectively. So now I guess we gotta get building. So one important part to all of this is the stepper motors. So the stepper motors actually fit and hold one of the axes up. So we have the five stepper motors here. Ta-da. And docks for them. And here is our frame. These are motor couplers that go from any any size hole to another size hole. They're five millimeters to five millimeters. So, uh, and they have a little bit of flex on them. That's what these relief really cuts are in there. So you just screw these two set screws in uh, on the top and bottom. And then from there, you can mount the motor to a rod or something like that. So that's what we'll be doing now. So this is the carriage that goes on the side. Um, it has spots for two captive nuts that will sit in these holes here. They look like nut holes, they're little hexagons. Um, and those will sit, and then the linear rod will go through these large holes there. All right, see, screw going up. Uh, place the 624 bearing into the idler. It looks like there's actually an idler 3D printed part. Great. So I was looking at this idler issue on the X axis and it seems like I can use this dowel. The inner diameter of this bearing as well as the inner diameter of the holes of here are about eight millimeters but this dowel is not that big. I think it's like six millimeters maybe. My assumption is that if I put the dowel through like this, once I wrap the belt around, I unscrew these four screws and slide the belt or slide the motor as close as I can to the outside. That should tension this bearing on the dowel and therefore it won't allow as much wiggle as it currently has. And if I can get away with that for like one or two prints, you know, enough to get my calibration prints out and then design something that can sit in here and hold it better, sit inside the, the bearing itself and then also inside the, uh, the mechanism. And maybe I can even get that smaller inner diameter bearing, the one that has a four millimeter ID to sit in here nicely. Then I could actually make a tensioning system similar to how the Prusa i3 has and or even just print theirs, whatever the, the system is. But this might be enough to hold me over for now without having to order another random eight millimeter uh, inner diameter part or a 3d printed part off of Zometry or one of those 3d printing companies because a lot of them are pretty expensive like they, they charge quite a lot for one-off part um, especially with shipping and everything so the, the more I can reduce that the better so if I can get this to work which I'm gonna try now maybe a little bit of hot glue and get that dowel set in there um, we'll see if I can we'll see if I can make this work
zip ties. I have not had zip ties um, in this apartment yet because, you know, again, I barely work on projects here until now. So, this should hopefully last me for a while. <laughs> I figured it, it's worth investing, and it's good for things aside from this. I'm actually going to be setting up my smart desk soon, so I'll probably need a bunch of these for cable management. This will be finishing up our mechanical assembly. We'll, we'll see how that goes. So, all right. In fact, I'll make it a little bit loose so it's easier to get on in this pose position, and then we can move this pulley over to tighten it. Now, we have our x-axis. And I was expecting as soon as I snip that for something to go completely wrong. The second you can't turn back, you know, something's gonna explode. So, okay, cool, good. So hopefully this will be good. Motor can turn, got some nice stuff going there. Next is the y-axis. that we will be able to put the final belt on. All right, let that sit for like two seconds. I'm gonna start going with the um, Y-axis pulley, which is the last part of our mechanical assembly. Hey everyone, Editing Alex here. I realized that my outro I recorded at my apartment was a little bit quiet, so I'm re-recording now. Uh, excuse the background, I'm actually in my childhood room uh, back home visiting family for winter break. Thanks so much for watching, I really appreciate it. I'd appreciate it if you leave any feedback down in the comments below. Uh, as well, you could also tweet at me, I'll put the link in the description to my Twitter, or you can contact me on my website, also linked in the description, it's alexarcasoy.com. Uh, there's a contact form there, as well as my portfolio of other mechanical and software projects that I've worked on. I'll be adding these projects there. Check those out if you're interested. In addition, like if you like the video because it really helps me know that. The next videos I'll be putting out in this series are going to be the extruder mount design as well as the motor tuning. In addition, I'm going to be assembling a standing desk back in my apartment and reorganizing my workspace. So I'm going to be showing you my workstation in that video. So get subscribed if you're interested in seeing any of those and leave a comment for any feedback about future videos you'd like to see. Thank you very much.